Crossroads Media. I love this basketball team. I'm in love with this basketball team. Maybe not as much as I love my bookie, but it's pretty damn close. Speaking of my bookie, before we talk about the Sixers' fourth straight win and a ridiculous finish thanks to Furcon hitting a fourth quarter three and Tyrese Maxey looking completely different from his four of 12 first half, making zero shots from deep. Ridiculous what this team is doing. No Joel in the fourth quarter. Make it make sense. I didn't think this team could ever survive seven seconds without the big fella, without the MVP. Here we are putting away a team and actually gaining an advantage when Embiid is on the bench and they have someone named Kevin Durant. Not sure if you've heard of him before, right? Even though no Beal and no Booker, Kevin Durant without Joel, you think that's a matchup nightmare. You pulled away. I love this team, and I love my bookie. If you found a $100 bill on the ground, you wouldn't walk right past it, so why are you passing up on cashing winners every weekend? My bookie has the biggest online selection of odds and contests to fill all your sports betting needs anytime, anywhere. So you can turn the sports knowledge into cash in your wallet. You can bet on the NFL, college football, college hoops, NBA, NHL, you name it. Or play for a share of big cash prizes in the weekly blackjack tournaments. If you've been waiting for the right time to get in on the action, now is the time. So make your winning move today. Sign up at my bookie. Use promo code BRODES and claim your deposit match redeemable up to $1,000. Again, that's promo code BRODES to claim your deposit. Experience the thrill of sports betting right from the comfort of your home. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Kelly Oubre kept you alive during that first half, and same with Tobias Harris. Oubre was shooting 70% from the field, and he had a massive three right before half when the Suns actually pushed it to a one-possession effort, and it was a disaster early. I have no idea if you want to call that basketball, then by all means, I guess you're allowed to, but I didn't call that basketball. I called that recess. When you're six years old in elementary school, if that math even adds up, I don't know. However old you are, when you're in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and you take the basketballs out at recess, and you're playing on the blacktop outside, and everyone's throwing the ball up, missing, and then trying to grab it again, and put it back up, and missing, and then getting the rebound again, and trying to put it back up, and missing, and then get the ball again, and then try and put it back, missing! That's what it was the first five, six, seven minutes. My eyes were blue leading until Kelly Oubre got the ball in his hands. I'm letting this kid have it, man. I'm letting him have that starting rotation spot. He's doing so damn well. It would do him a disservice, even though literally the last time we spoke about this team, I said I like his punch off the bench. This is something different. I'm sorry. Until it it's something else. I think I have to continue to trot this out there because my man is working his ass off on both sides of the court. And not only that, his contribution offensively has been game-changing. Game-changing. He has contributed to legitimate success. I want to continue to see that. Maybe make a change with the De'Anthony Melton spot if you want. It is still not pretty from him, but Outside of the Anthony Melton, it was balanced scoring on another night. 18, 26, 22, 25. So the rock is being distributed all around. And Tobias is giving you such a, a, a heavy attack mode. I love it. Whether he added back to the basket, play a little post up, eating alive with Grace and oh, and I loved what I'm seeing from this team. And there is a different sense of urgency from everybody on this roster. And we are watching Nick Nurse. Do Nick Nurse things. We've seen it from the other side, and it's always been a pain in the ass. Now we're seeing creativity. Now we're seeing someone adjust on the fly. Okay, I didn't like those minutes in the first half when Maxi was on the bench and Embiid had the basketball. We had a lot of turnovers as a team. The offense wasn't flowing. Things got stagnant. It was ugly. Well, let's try something different. Let's pair Oubre together. Let's have Maxi and Tobias. Let's see if we can keep two of our juggernauts out there on the floor at the same time so we can always have something established. Well, it paid off, and it paid off dividends. 
All jokes aside, I'm in on this year's Corky. Not legitimately to the point of, hey, championship. Just for what we're doing right now. All right, I still am very, very adamant that he is a regular season player who can help space the floor regular season play. But for right now, after everything he's been through, after every single one of his trade demands, which there were a billion of them, for him to get a nod and then actually produce over the last few nights, they had zero bench scoring. They were getting zip from their bench. And I liked Rocco getting his hands in the cookie jar, creating a a, a nice bucket out in transition so you get the steal. The fans were happy to see him back in the uniform again. All right, that's all cute and dandy, but Ferky Ferk, Ferky Ferk, I'm a, I'm a long time. What is that? Is that is that is that is that, is that Fergie? Is that Fergie? Did I just show Fergie, but instead said Corky? I don't know. I don't know what the hell that was. I had a long day. My body's exhausted. I actually had another tattoo appointment today. So while I was getting tatted, I had the Sixers game on the TV. So it was nice because I basically had a noon to four session, about a four hour session, and I watched the entire game while getting some new ink. So it was good for me, and it was relaxing, even though by the end I said, yo, let's wrap it up here. I can't sit like I used to. I used to be able to do six-hour sessions, seven-hour sessions. Now at three hours-ish, because the first half hour or so you're getting the stencil going, you're shooting the shit. I'd say it was about three hours of work. At three hours, I'm like, yo, I am. But it does feel better knowing your team is snagging another W And making a statement. I don't know if the NBA world just assumed that the Sixers would be a disaster because of the James Harden situation and when you trade him for a bunch of role players. And I did say this at the time. Everyone's looking from the outside, looking at who they got back from the Clippers and then mocking the Sixers instantly without really doing it uh, uh, the proper service, without actually diving in. The pick swap, the first-round picks... Um, you know, Maxi's ability to rise. Look at his scoring over the last handful of years. He starts at eight points per game. It takes a big jump. It takes a big jump to 20 points per game. Now we're flirting around 27 points per game. And Nick Nurse knows exactly what he has here in his young guard. He's got a damn star in the making. And that's why even after a night like this where you could say you battled adversity mid-game, You went from awful to you helped close this thing out without Joel and beat. Let that process, no pun intended, without the big fella, here's Maxie cooking in the fourth after being abysmal and not playing strong. Nick Nurse postgame applies the pressure and says it's not good enough. What Maxie did was not good enough. Holding his legs to the fire. Why? Because he knows that if Tyrese Maxey continues this and just gains more experience and is constantly the guy, just wait until you see what he becomes. I love it. We're just casually looking at 10 assists, 25 points, right? Eh, sorry. But if this is what it's going to be every night, I need more from you. What you did was unacceptable. I love that level of accountability. And I love applying that mentality to Tyrese Maxey in his game. He can handle it. He's only going to get better from it. And he's basically admitting that what we have here is different. What Maxey is, his speed change, when he goes full throttle, his pull-up game, who will stop him when everything gets molded? When he becomes more polished, let me know the stopper. You don't stop guys like that. You don't stop a Kevin Durant, as we saw. You try and limit him. And you throw different bodies his way, different lengths, different sizes. And at times, you might have to ask Joel B to help out a bit with that big presence in the paint. Hey, man, that's a matchup that smells like garbage. All right, hey, hee, ha, he, there's a guard on Kevin Durant. We need some help. You smell that? Yeah, that's called trash. Hey, uh, it might be scrappy, but we need some help, Joel. Joel can help. You don't stop these guys. Well, Maxie is one of them now. They only go quiet for so long. 
They only miss their shots for so long. Because when the last 12 minutes roll around, it's him and Furcon. Ha <laughs> ha Furcon with that three. All jokes aside, there were two shots that were really significant in my eyes. And I could throw a third one in there and it could definitely be one of the maxi threes. But I really think the three before half by Kelly Oubre when it was a one possession game. I believe it was a two point game at the time for that nice little punch. I loved it. And the Furcon fourth quarter three. And I don't want to sell Paul Reed short because that was the best Paul Reed we have seen this year. And he needs to hang on that. It has been horrible for him to get close to the basket, find some space in the paint, and then finish around the rim. I thought he was sensational in timely spots. They're playing as one. They all believe, and I think they have some fire in them knowing that there have been a lot that counted them out. All right, they're bad. They're awful. They're trash. They got role players. They're screwed. Daryl Morey's an idiot. They lost the trade. No, they didn't. There's still more to go. It's not over yet how they can add to this roster. But until they do it, they're playing the right way. They believe in one another. They believe in the coach. It's fresh. Now, I'm not telling you that they have the championship team right now with all the pieces. That's not what I'm saying. But they are still way closer than the respect that they have around the league. Milwaukee hasn't shot out of a cannon as crisp as you would think. And if your argument is, well, it takes time to adjust with the Damian Lillard being factored in and how he plays with Giannis and a head coach and making it all work. Okay, same here. And what you're forgetting is there is a new addition here in Philadelphia too after losing James Harden and his presence and his ability to facilitate. His name is Tyrese Maxey because no one has seen this before at a Maxey in this uniform. The internal jump and the internal difference is Maxey becoming a, a star guard and a star point guard and an all-star caliber guy who's scoring scary numbers on a night-to-night basis. Just saying. Just saying. You forgot about that. Addition by subtraction is real. And after seeing what the locker room was like when James Harden walked into the locker room for the first time to see Russell Westbrook, that dude just gives off bad energy. That dude just gives off bad vibes. Imagine saying, I'm... The system with Kawhi, Paul George, and Westbrook on the same exact team. Oh, yeah, I'm sure that's going to go great. I'm sure you're going to have a blast. (laughs) Okay. Before we take some anytime hotline calls, speaking of things being a blast, you know what's a blast? Watching this team live. Watching the Flyers live. Watching the Philadelphia Eagles live. Going to a concert live. And what if I told you, not that I can cover the entire ticket prices for you, but I can give you $10 off just to give you a nudge and say, hey, take this, use this, and... Put it towards going to one of these events so you can watch Tyrese Maxey do his thing with your own eyeballs. Take your kids. Take your take your significant other. If you click the link down below in the description, tick pick, my promo code's already activated with that link, promo code BRODES, and you will get $10 off if you spend over $100 or more, and they have the best prices guaranteed. They know it so much so that if you find the same seats on a different platform, and it's more expensive, which is impossible, you won't. If the tick pick ones are are more expensive, which you won't because that's impossible, I just want to verify that, they will give you the difference in tick pick credit. Oh, okay, you won't find it. And also, they don't have any BS, meaning if you go to the price that is the price. You don't get hit with anything afterwards. Oh, but Broads, it said it was $50, and now it's $150. Nope, don't worry about it. The price you see is the price you pay. So make sure you click that link down below. Get yourself to one of these games today and embrace what this is because this is must-watch basketball, and you, 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 you have to. You just have to see it. All right, let's kick it. Let's rock it. Let's see some calls here and hear from all of you out there who watch this beautiful games of hoops, a beautiful game of hoops. Yeah, I could speak, except for maybe the first quarter or so. Whatever that slop was early on, just disregard that. 
Yo, bros, it's Kyle from Connecticut. It's been a little while since I've called in, but, um, you know, I got to say, I'm having a lot of fun watching these Sixers right now. You know, I'm, I'm so cautious. My expectations are incredibly high as far as, you know, reaching, you know, the conference finals or the finals this year. But I got to say, I'm having fun watching them. Like, they're playing well right now. Oubre has been such a nice boost. He's looking great in the starting role, although I still think uh, coming off the bench would be a better fit for him. But, you know, they're they're doing great. That was a great burst by Maxi at the end there, getting his scoring back up to kind of put the game out of reach. Um, and, yeah, so far I've been enjoying the run. Wasn't very optimistic coming in, but I think shedding Harden and the drama that came with that, offloading P.J. Tucker's contract uh, off the books was a big help. And um, I don't know, I'm feeling a little optimistic about our future. Uh, you know, we'll just have to see how more he plays his cards and see where we go, but um, in the moment, I'm having a lot of fun. And I think that's the right way to approach this right now. Let's not overthink things. Let's not overcomplicate things. You can't fast forward. And I even said that before the first game. I know everyone's down and out, and I understand that everyone feels a certain type of way uh, about this group and this organization, but you can't fast forward to the spring. And I'm a Flyers fan, but they won't carry me alone, right? They play on a Monday, Thursday, and a Saturday. Well, there's other nights, and if the Sixers play on that same night or they mix in a game on Tuesday and a game on Friday. I need more than just the flyer. You have to embrace what this journey is to get there. And even if you mention, well, I don't know if they get to the conference finals or I don't know if they get to uh, the NBA finals. There's so much that happens from now until then. If we're getting this early on, let's just see. I think they deserve, forget the past. I don't care about the past because every team is different. Tobias Harris playing under Nick Nurse is a different Tobias Harris. You have a different core. You have a deeper roster. That has been part of the problem for years and years is you have the elite talent. So we thought, I'm just saying, we had we were top heavy. Is that a better way to describe it? We had a lot of top heavy guys on the roster, but super thin. And after six, your rotation was trash. You were Horrible. So now you get to filter in, and I say this in Cork Moss is one of your most efficient guys off the bench. And what the hell are you talking about, bro? There's just a lot of respectable bodies now. And after six in a playoff series, I'm talking really when you shrunk it down, which should make it easier. In the regular season, you go 10 deep. You go whatever deep. We were, we were having a very difficult time finding six or seven guys in a playoff series. When you shrink the roster, it got that much harder. That's crazy. That's absurd. Absurd. So you have something different than you did in years past, and maybe it, it becomes different because you utilize some of these contracts that you received from the Clippers to go out and get a splash and land a Levine or land somebody else, and then we're not talking about this the same way, but we'll adjust our thinking as that happens, and as much as I love having a deeper roster, I still think the better way to go about this is to have a balance between Still a decent amount of guys, so you can have seven or eight respectable names and still have more beef to the top of your roster compared to not so much beef and you have nine or ten guys. You see what I'm saying? If in years past we had electric starting five, which the whole Sports Illustrated cover and Jimmy Butler and J.J. Redick, but your sixth and seventh man is me, well, there's got to be somewhere in between that we can have a respectable uh, heavy five and then also bleed that into the bench where there's eight guys that we can call on on any given night instead of Amir Johnson. Who did they pluck off the street that one year? I forget who it was, and he actually had to play minutes for us, but he, he was he was like an Amir Johnson type. I don't know. Was it Kyle O'Quinn? Was that another guy who got popped in here and there at some time? That's the vomit. We can't be doing that vomit anymore. There's a way where Daryl Morey can use some of these contracts, still improve to the point we don't need to look in, in, in those directions either. You know what I'm saying? There, there's There's got to be. Please tell me. There's got to be. There's got to be. There's got to be. Let's go! Yeah! Did you see Embiid ain't even had to play in the fourth quarter? Huh? You see Kelly Oubre? That's what we do. We not the same sixes no more. And did you see my man, man, Max? Fourth quarter. He clutch. That's what he do. Stop playing, man. Come on. 
I love it. And I love Ubre. I'm in on this Ubre thing, dude. I think he's inspired. I think he's pissed off. I think he's angry. I think he's just so disappointed with how the entire league viewed him when seeing how many points he could score. He's got vengeance right now. And when you have Joel Embiid and you have an MVP that has so much attention drawn to him, and same with Maxi, and even a guy like Tobias. We rip Tobias all the time. Not so much me. I actually stand on the... That I've given him more love than most side of things. But for as much hate as he gets in this city, it's really because we apply the contract to the performance. In the NBA, guys know that Tobias can get his. Tobias can do his thing. Tobias can make shots. Tobias is a respected NBA player. So I'm just saying, if you're defending this team, someone like Oubre, well, there's guys who are looking at Toby. And, and it's different because P.J. Tucker can't make a shot or be a threat at all. Spacing. Spacing, spacing, spacing. It's 2023. This team got crushed in years past because they had to work with one of the worst people would ever exist on a basketball floor in Ben Simmons. And as much as P.J. Tucker was a very important piece to the scrappiness and the attention to the defensive side of the floor and how annoying he is, he did make winning plays. He did make winning efforts as much as he was horrible five on four on the offensive side of the floor. Guys like Oubre can really take advantage of Embiid's presence, Maxi's presence, Tobias's presence, it, it, it's different when now you're you're that fourth or fifth guy. Melton's not really doing too much, but you're that fourth guy. Look at what he's doing. He's absolutely flourishing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. Kudos to him. I think he's really bought into everything Nick Nurse is selling, and you can see it on a night-to-night basis. You can see it. Hey, bro, this is MCE Mason calling. First off, I want to say – that, thank you very much for being a stalwart Philly sports supporter. You guys are worth your weight in gold. Uh, I mean, right now, watching the 76ers, oh, my God, man. Nick Nurse has transformed the team. Kelly Oubre is kicking ass. Joel Embiid is looking like a completely different beast now. Tyrese Maxey making that leap. Mike, Tobias Harris. Man, what can you say about Tobias Harris? I, I don't even recognize him anymore. I mean, my God, like he's – fantastic on both ends of the floor. I mean, like, it's almost like he's like, yo, I'm out here to earn that contract this year, man. Like, oh, man, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm completely floored, man. Four and one, man. Five and oh, if, you know, the refs did their job in the first game, but what are you going to do? Anyway, thanks again, bros. Love you, man. Peace. I love you, too. I appreciate you taking the time out the call. Toby's doing his thing. Maybe his dad said, hey, son. You know what time it is. You want to get another one of those fat tickets? Well, you ball out this year, and I'll see if I can iron out some details with a different team and get you another $700 million. All right, this guy on the contract year is definitely in his bag in the nice early portions of the season. This team is on a different tear right now, and I think they feel the disrespect. Now, you mentioned Nick Nurse, and I'm not going to make this a Brett Brown, Doc Rivers thing. That's not my point. But when looking around the league, and I've been saying this for years, there's only a handful of guys that make that level of impact at the coaching position. Doc Rivers is one of the most winningest coaches in NBA history, and that's a fact. I'm not just making that up. He is one of the most winningest coaches in NBA history. Eh, that's how we felt about him, right? Eh, and reasonably so. He did a lot of things well that people won't give him credit for, and there was a downfall, similar to a Rob Thompson feel. This is how I do things. I'm going to stick to my guns. Either it works or doesn't work. And it gets you pretty far. All due respect to Doc Rivers, it gets you to a certain point. I think there needed to be tweaks involved towards the end. And he never really tweaked when needed to tweak. And then that's his downfall as he bangs his head against the wall. Still does a lot of things well that I think he deserves credit for. But Eric Spolscher, Popovich, Budenholzer wins a championship. He's gone instantly. Bang. Done. Next. Next. Who's next? Lakers. Eh, eh, one championship. Next. Next. Who's next? Nick Nurse. Ta- tactically. As a tactician can make a team different, similar to Popovich and Spo. There's not many guys in the league that can. 
And that was always my debate with people. Get this guy, get that guy. There's really only maybe three that can. You now have one, though. And it's exciting. But there's not many in this league. A lot of them are just guys. And then it comes down to talent. Look at Monty Williams, who I think is a good coach. Eh, I don't know. Eh. I think Ty Lue's a good coach. A lot of these guys are good coaches. At the top tier list of current NBA coaches, there's a couple that stand out more than most. And you have one of them, which is beautiful. And HelloFresh is beautiful too. HelloFresh changed my life. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinnertime recipe rut. So keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every single week. So there's always something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive right at your doorstep and they're pre-portioned and ready to cook along with pictured step-by-step recipe cards. How easy is that? HelloFresh is 25% less expensive than takeout. So that means you get an easy home cooked meal on the table and even more money back in your pocket go to hellofresh.com slash 50 broads and use code 50 broads for 50 percent off plus free shipping that's 50 broads for 50 percent off plus free shipping hellofresh is america's number one meal kit my wife and i we we basically cook hellofresh every single night we just made a shrimp mushroom risotto with chives and garlic herb butter i tweeted out a picture on my twitter and, uh, dude, I mean, I'm choking up right now just thinking about I don't know if you heard that or not. It's because I want it now. I need it now. I need it again. Maybe I'll cook some for dinner tonight. You have to join me and the HelloFresh family. Click the link down below. It's activated with the link. My code, that is, 50 Broads. It gets you 50% off in free shipping. Check it out. You will be pleased. I guarantee it. Okay, let's take another call here. Let's go to Sean. Nice win for the Sixers today. Of course, made easier with Booker not playing. But, you know, solid start. Now, for me, one thing is obvious. I mean, you see what a solid head coach can do. I mean, you give Nick Nurse a little, he can do a lot. I mean, getting rid of Harden was a move that had to be made. I, I don't know what it's going to net you as far as the now, but in the future, those draft picks and the cap relief can turn into something good. You know, today you gave Embiid some rest in the fourth quarter. Maxi with Harden's departure continues to emerge. And Kelly Oubre has been a solid, solid pickup, although I wonder with his offense if bringing him off the bench might not still be the way to go. I get but a that. solid start for the Sixers, more than probably a lot of us could have imagined. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm sorry about that. I thought the call was over. Look, if you want to go bench, by all means, I'm okay with bringing Kelly Oubre off the bench. I got no issue with it. 24 hours ago, I would have said that's my preferred destination. But if he's going to cook this way, I have to keep letting this offense and uh, the starting rotation utilize that hot run that he's on. If, if he's going to score like this and space the floor, spacing, 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 spacing makes it easier for every single human in the world world that dribbles a basketball I I need to let that fly I have to keep letting it cook maybe you you could switch out the Anthony Melton he just doesn't look right and I'm not ruling out that he ever can he's probably more of a bench piece anyway in theory he's not consistent enough there's no one I, I get it because if you bring Rubre off the bench there's at least someone reliable and consistent if this stays true that is off your bench. If not, then it's a Pat Beverly. It's a Robert Covington. It's a Furkan Korkmaz, you know? And I guess that's when the argument can be made that always have a Max here and, and Embiid on the floor at the same time. So if Embiid's out there with no Maxi, can you have Ubre out there? And can you have Tobias paired together with Maxi? So there's always two of those out there. And we've had that argument in the past before when Doc would take out Harden and Embiid at the same time and we're like, yo, dude, you got to at least have one of these threats out there to apply some sort of pressure to the other team. And, you know, we've been through that before. So maybe that's a way around that is is basically what I'm trying to do is find an answer 
and maybe that's something that you do. But right now, I'm sticking with Kelly Oubre because of what type of performance we're getting on a night-to-night basis. We'll wrap things up here with Zach in Baltimore to, to close out the show. Bros, man, I'm loving what I'm seeing out of this Sixers team right now. I mean, it's just so infectious, man. Nick Nurse, I love how he has these boys playing, man. See how much different things are when Doc Rivers and James Harden are gone. Like Tyrese Maxey, the kid's a stud. Ten dimes. He can be a point guard in this league for sure. Oubre, man. Ooh, I love this guy, Oubre, dude. If he keeps this up, I mean, he won't keep up 25 a game. But, you know, if he can be 18, 19 a game for us, that's huge. I love this team, man. I can't believe I, I was so pissed off at them after what happened last year. I'm sold, man. Let's fucking go. Let's trade for a star. Let's go Sixers, baby. We're all back. We're all back. You're lying to yourself if you're not back. We're all back. We're ready to get broken again, although this time it feels different. And I stand by that. I don't know where this goes, but I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to enjoy it as they win their fourth straight game. All right, everybody. I love you all to death. I appreciate you. We'll be talking very soon, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.